The gospel reading for today comes from John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God. Now, children... In worship today, I'd like you to come a little closer to whatever screen you're watching, whatever device that you're on, so we can have a moment for a children's message right now. It is so good to have you in worship with us today. Now, I have a question for you. Do you have a best friend? You know... Someone that you met and, and, and you knew you wanted to spend more time with them. Maybe it's someone in your family, like your mom and dad, brother or sister, cousin, uh, a friend at school or daycare, or a neighbor. It is such a great feeling to have a good friend, isn't it? Well, I have a picture to share with you today. This is the picture of my best friend. She is my twin sister, Beth. Now, this picture was taken a long time ago. We're sleeping in a plastic swimming pool. She is my best friend, who happens to be my family. How lucky am I? I am guessing that Jesus felt pretty lucky when he first met his friends, who were the first disciples. The gospel story for today tells us that Jesus was traveling along, and he met Philip, who who he asked, Come, come with me and be my disciple. Well, Well, what do you think Philip did? He followed Jesus, and then he went to his friends and asked them to come along as well. They didn't know who Jesus was, but they knew that he was something special, and he wanted to spend, and they wanted to spend more time with him. Now, when Jesus met those men, those friends, he looked into their hearts and knew that they were people that he could share God's love with, and that they would share God's love with other people, too. We might look at those guys, those first disciples, and think, they're pretty ordinary people. But Jesus looked into their hearts and saw amazing things and knew that they could do amazing things in the world. And the same thing is for you and for me. God looks into our hearts and sees amazing things and knows that we are going to do amazing things in the world. Now, I have some homework for you this week. I want to invite you to make a big heart out of paper and write down the amazing things that God sees in your heart. You can write things on your heart like kind things that you do, like caring for animals, 
loving your family, helping out at home, being friendly, listening to others. And it can also be fun things like that you like to do like painting or being musical or being good at sports or writing. You can write those things on your heart. Then I would like you to send pictures of your heart to me at church. I want to show you the heart that I made for myself. I know that you can make some amazing hearts too, and I can't wait to see them. Would you please pray with me? Thank you, God, for looking into my heart and loving me. Thank you for being my friend, Jesus. Help me to share the good news of Jesus with others every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for spending some time on children's message today, my friends. We'll see you soon. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and Jesus, the Son of God, who calls us to follow him. Amen. I am an ESFJ. ESFJ is an acronym used to describe one of the 16 personality types identified by the Myers-Briggs Personality Inventory. It stands for extroverted, sensing, feeling, and judging. People with an ESFJ personality type tend to be outgoing, loyal, organized, and tender-hearted, which I believe is pretty true for me. I took the Myers-Briggs personality inventory back in college and again at Luther Seminary. My result, ESFJ, happened both times. Nothing changed. I guess that is good. Yet one thing about my personality inventory that I struggle with is the J. The J does stand for judging, which describes how I interact with the outside world. It is how I approach life in a structured and organized way. So for me, this personality trait navigates me to evaluate my outside surroundings and draw conclusions about them to attempt to keep control in my life. To me, I feel that my J comes out sideways in the form of assumptions that I make about the world and the people around me. And that isn't always a good thing. We know an assumption is a thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without any proof. Can anything good come out of Nazareth said Nathaniel in our gospel reading for today. Nathaniel has some opinions, some assumptions about Nazareth. Now, have you ever made any assumptions? I know I have said things like, I've seen his type before. He'll never change. Or, she won't understand. She never does. Or, it's always been like that. It'll never get any better. People of faith, people like Nathaniel, people like you and me, make these and all sorts of assumptions every day. Sometimes our assumptions are about other people, how they will behave, what they will say, what they think or believe. Other times, we look at situations our relationships, the state of the world, the state of the church, or a teenager trying to grow up, and we may declare it hopeless. We are sure nothing good can come out of that situation. 
Then there are those times we look at ourselves or a part of our life. Maybe it is a secret we have carried for years. The illness we face each day. The hurts we have caused others. The loneliness of grief or mental illness. And we say, it will never get better. How can anything good come out of this? We may or may not speak our assumptions out loud, but they run through our minds and influence what we do. You know what happens when we assume, right? The old saying has some truth to it, but I am thinking of something else. The assumptions we make destroy relationships, love, and life. We think we know more than we actually do. Assumptions act as limitations. Assumptions act as an approach to control the world around us. Our assumptions deny the possibility of reconciliation, healing, a different way of being, or a new life. Ultimately, they weaken our faith and proclaim there is no room for God to show up and act. Today we heard in our gospel reading the story of Jesus calling the disciples. We heard that Philip, a new disciple, is so impressed with Jesus that he invites a friend, Nathaniel, to come and see. Philip says, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote. What was it about Jesus that had Philip so impressed to invite his friend to join him? There was something about Jesus that drew people to him. Had Philip and Nathanael known him before? Had Philip heard about him from Andrew and Peter since they lived in the same town? The text doesn't say. It only says that Philip followed Jesus right away, then told Nathanael that we had found the one promised in the Old Testament— Was the we Philip spoke of other people who were following Jesus? We don't know. Yet one thing is clear. Nathaniel first hesitated at the invitation from Philip and made a big assumption about Jesus. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? With no hesitation, Philip simply said to him, Come and see. Eventually, when Jesus tells Nathanael that he saw him already, Nathanael is so impressed that he calls Jesus the Son of God and the King of Israel. He names with certainty who Jesus is. Now again, what was there about Jesus that had this impressive effect on people? We can read in the New Testament Gospels and find the profound effect Jesus had when he met people. For example, Zacchaeus, the woman at the well, the thief crucified next to Jesus, and the centurion at the foot of the cross, to name a few. People meet Jesus, and they are changed. Jesus looked into their hearts and loved them. Whatever their deepest need was, Jesus met it. Then they told others what happened. And that's how it has worked ever since. One person says to another, I follow Jesus and and I invite you to do so too. Later, as the church grows, parents bring their infant children for baptism at church, promising to raise them in the faith. It's always person to person. The Old Testament lesson for today also carries that same message. The boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under the priest Eli. God called to Samuel a couple of times, and the boy naturally assumed it was Eli. 
Eli realized it was God calling and instructed the boy to say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel heard God's call the third time, he responded as Eli had instructed. And God told him what message to deliver back to Eli. The pattern in the story is still person to person. Our scripture readings for today remind us that the Christian faith is passed from person to person, no matter who they are, no matter the assumptions that they make, no matter their racial or social or economic background. Jesus looked into the hearts of his disciples, loved them, and asked them to follow him. And the same thing is true for us. God looks into our hearts, loves us, and calls us to follow him. And that's how it started, and that's how it's been for 2,000-plus years. When we were baptized in faith, the future was being prepared for us. We, we probably didn't know what we were getting in, ourselves into, but we were on the road to follow Jesus Our task as Christians is not to prove the truth of the Christian faith, although many scholars have written persuasively of the truth of Christianity. Our task is not even to persuade others to become Christian. Our task is to say, come and see. Philip could have given Nathaniel some of his own opinions after Nathaniel's assumption about Jesus. Philip could have said, this Jesus knows a lot about the Bible. Or he might have said, there is something about this man Jesus that draws me to him. Even more so, Philip could have listed some other successful people from Nazareth besides Jesus. But no. Philip simply said, come and see. As if to say, you don't need me to advertise for Jesus Come and see for yourself. And Nathaniel did just that. That now becomes our task, to tell people, come and see. Come and see what Jesus has done and is doing for you. The spread of the Christian church across the world is the person-to-person story of the thousands of people who fanned out across the globe to tell the story about Jesus and what Jesus had done for them. People become Christians because they have seen what the Christian faith has done for those whom they know. The saying passed down from the early years of the church still rings true today. See those Christians, how they love one another. And it rings true here at Trinity. Last year, Trinity launched its strategic plan for Oatana, where over the next three years, Trinity will create ministries that support individuals and families who've been broken by life's circumstances and initiate new ministries to serve people who are living on the margins of society. And finally, create innovative and dynamic ways of inviting and welcoming all people into faith formation. We, together as a Trinity community, are empowered by this strategic plan to say, come and see to our neighbor. All the baptized, you and me, have a calling in God's world. God calls not just pastors and deacons, but also the youngest child like Samuel. In a world where we can be encouraged to be a Nathaniel, divided, judgmental, making assumption. God asks us to be a Philip with eyes to see the world as Jesus does, full of love, mercy, healing, and hope, and to see the hearts of our neighbors and meet them where they are at. Friends, On this second Sunday after Epiphany, let us remember that God does not allow himself to be limited 
by our assumptions. For every Nazareth, there is an invitation to come and see. For every assumption we make, there is a deeper truth to be discovered, a new relationship to be experienced, and a new life to be lived. Our Nazareths become a place of God's epiphany, and that is good news for us today. Thanks be to God. Amen.